Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Dr. Italo Brown, emergency physician, and this is The Breakdown. First up, we got Scarface. Okay. Do you want to play rough? Let's play rough. Say hello to my little friend. All right, stop. In emergency medicine, we deal with blast injuries all the time, or things that come from these types of mass casualty events. The fact that they were that close to the blast is worrisome to me. Barrel trauma to the ears or pressurized injury to the ear because it's a tight space, right? And then you've got other things such as what's flying through the air because of a blast. So shrapnel, matter from the buildings, then the body actually being thrown in the air is another degree of trauma. So imagine being lifted off the ground and then slammed to the ground uh, with this tremendous force. I don't know if they would even get back up right away. If not, they'd have their ears ringing. So, all right, we continue. All right, stop. I don't see a guy being able to continue to shoot after that, specifically because where it hit him. So he got hit left upper thorax area. So like left chest, heart, you have lungs. Anytime you hit someone's center mast, they're gonna have uh, a very poor outcome. Don't you think you're I told him I'm better. He's bleeding a lot. <laughs> or he should be able to talk like that. I mean, he's taking at least four rounds that I've seen. The first one itself was lethal. So I don't know how he could continue to have this monologue in real life. I mean, this guy definitely is not standing. He's gonna pass out at any moment. You go with it back. That's it. That is it. <laughs> that is it. It's a wrap. I mean, he was talking and then all of a sudden, 50 cent. That's it, <laughs> just gets hit all over the chest. <laughs> I mean, I just was thinking about, like, as I'm rolling this in my head, if he is still on cocaine, <laughs> he would have bled faster. One of the side effects or the actual main effect of taking cocaine is a sympathomimetic, which is like a drug that boosts all of your, your senses up. So it would benefit him to have taken cocaine and to already be in this fight or flight uh, type of scenario. But if you were hitting a vital artery, I don't know if that would be a real thing to see someone go this far in the fight. Stop. Most shotgun wounds are lethal. He gets hit one time. All those other guys shot him about 97 times and nothing happened apparently, but this one, it is the one that good nights him. Oh. Man. Poor guy. All right, next up we have us. trust people that walk like that. <laughs> Just don't do it naturally. I don't trust them. She's so fast. All right, stop. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> the way that she got stabbed through the back of the hand, I would be concerned that after this, she couldn't make a fist. Very realistic injury. Something that I see extremely, you know, often in the emergency department. I take my hat off to her to continue to fight after this. It's wild. <laughs> not gonna be able to grab that. That's just what I believe. <laughs> She's not grabbing that. I don't know if she'd be able to create enough force to hold it. The thumb might be okay unless the blood supply is compromised. But as you're watching this, like no blood dripping behind her. If you've ever seen a hand injury, it bleeds like crazy. I'm talking about it's consistent flow. And if it's an artery, which is where I think she probably had severed, that artery is going to continue to put out blood, like high output. She wouldn't be able to continue this far without us seeing evidence of the injury. Mm -mm. Surprise. Mm, got her. <laughs> Whoa. All right. These wounds that go through the abdomen, except for this one is at the level where I think it may have gone through part of the diaphragm and it may even go into the back. So, I mean, let's play a little bit longer. Let me see. Oh, that's it. Yeah, so it's all the way through here. <laughs> I don't have to tell you to see it, but for it to go front to back, it's possibly affecting spinal nerves. She's not gonna be able to walk from, or move anything from that level below. I'd be more concerned about, at that angle, what part of the heart did she hit? Like, I think she may have just severed her aorta, maybe. <laughs> don't believe it. That diaphragm, I think she pierced through it. So I don't see being able to even make 
the motion to breathe in and, and, and whistle because that rod went straight through both. The, the asphyxiation with the, uh, the handcuffs, that's pretty brutal, man. I got a problem with, <laughs> with movies that have this like sound of crunching. It's not like that easy to go through all of those structures and then all of a sudden magically get to vertebrae and just like, I don't know if that happens like that. So I think that the crunch is more than likely from something more anterior in the front of the neck, not so much posterior. All right, the next movie we're gonna see, Whiplash. Turn 200 feet. Are you driving, man? No. What the hell was that noise? Okay, look, why don't you just tell Fletcher that I'm coming, you mother Stop. <laughs> There's a lot of lessons to be learned just from this part. Motor vehicle accidents, like one of the top, the leading causes of death in young people. He's talking on the phone, totally distracted, driving the car, and they're setting it up just like it happens when it comes into my emergency department. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo, I worry off the top about him being thrown and jostled in the car. The car flips. You've got an entire different set of things that you're worried about. Loss of consciousness, head injury. So his head struck something in the car. Glass broken, that's projectile. If the car is basically bent in on the side by the driver, his lower body is entrapped. He's lucky. I mean, he's. this is what I'm talking about. This is a super common thing that we get in the emergency department. They, will bring us someone who was in a rollover accident and they come mangled. I mean, seatbelts are extremely helpful and try to reduce injuries like this, but that type of deceleration or quick shearing force, if it wasn't an airbag that hit him or the steering wheel that hit him, then it may have been the side of the car itself. Like a coup contra coup is the phrase that they use, which basically is like some cool French word, which means that the head strikes on one side and impacts and then the, uh, the opposite side will also impact. He may have struck something on one end and the force threw him in the opposite direction and he struck the wall of the car again. boys on the mission. <laughs> I would not be getting up out of the car. But a lot of times what happens on the scene is someone will get up and then they go down immediately because they didn't realize that they had an intracranial bleed. You think everything is cool and okay? then you go down. We call that a lucid interval. Are you okay? Yeah, I gotta get my stick. No, 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 stay away from the car. I would definitely not recommend standing straight up vertically, walking around because I'm worried about him having bleeding that's not visible. I'm worried about his neck having an injury and a vertebral misalignment. Do not move, but if you're worried about the vehicle blowing up, man, crawl, Lieutenant Dan it out. <laughs> Just get out, <laughs> get out, man. The body woke up and said, we were just in a car accident. Yes, you were. <laughs> and that's why I don't think he could continue the performance. He would have a difficulty trying to hold the sticks. That match grip wouldn't be as easy. Him trying to, to like keep along with things and hear things, all of those senses could be compromised by pooling blood inside the head. Next up, Kill Bill, volume two. Pause. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> if you're trapped inside a coffin, oxygen is gonna be an immediate concern. I think that you'd only be able to survive like a matter of minutes uh, in this situation. Her core temperature might be a little bit elevated trying to figure out what's going on in this situation. The cool thing about people who are this highly trained, sometimes they're able to lower their heart rate and lower their body temperature, their core temperature. So that's like upper echelon type of warrior stuff. She might be able to do that. I still don't see that giving her a considerable time advantage. You can't make more oxygen exist in this space. The fact that you're rebreathing carbon dioxide would make it a little bit less likely for you to do this type of focused activity. Mm hmm that good one inch punch. And pause. Trained boxers or trained fighters know exactly which knuckles to strike with and how to limit the likelihood of a fracture. Any other random person off the street who was trying to punch their way through a coffin, one, I don't think they'd be able to get that far. Two, they're definitely gonna break a hand. I'd expect them to have fractures of the ring finger and the pinky finger because they don't know how to throw a punch properly. Whereas her, she probably has already had so many fractures that the bone itself is formed in a certain way to be strengthened so that she wouldn't fracture her hand that easy. Another thing that doesn't make sense to me. She's deep underneath the ground, right? So dirt's coming in, not air. <laughs> it's just 
more dirt. So I don't know if you get a great benefit of oxygen from having more minerals dropped inside on you. But and then the broke hand reaches through the earth. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that's probably the most realistic part of this whole thing is how much she wanted that oxygen when she got up out. Because <laughs> I know that sister is, uh, was struggling down there, so congrats to you. All right, so the next movie, Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Come right over here. <laughs> Show. <laughs> Pause. Uh, this is like a, a very classic injury, right? It usually means that the person can't move their limbs below the level of the injury and has some sensory deficits. So I'd like to see what happens as far as like how they display that. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't care. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't care. Use the machine gun. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't enough that she got a knife in the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> these are their facial expressions. Unfortunately, I've never been in a situation to know exactly how this plays out, but any high-powered weapon like that has the ability to make bullets go through bodies. So I'd be worried that Austin would have taken at least two. Wait a minute. <laughs> Go back. You see how she has no injuries on the front of her body? Yeah, that's no, no. No! No! Wait a minute. <laughs> now she has the injuries again. <laughs> To even try to talk about how realistic it is, I feel foolish, but <laughs> she took an RPG round straight to the body and Austin's untouched. Like, <laughs> nothing phases my man. I think that that's funny. In real life, we know what would happen. I love the fact that she's sitting here still talking to him while they fall. Just a little char, you know? <laughs> she's just, just a little singed. Mm. Yeah, she's definitely gone after that fall. And he might actually have an injury too. That's probably one of the most misunderstood things. People think that if I fall, try to land on my feet, uh, you'll end up with a lot of compression fractures that way, bilateral ankle fractures, the vertebrae itself from the axial load or the load of the force going down onto the vertebrae or coming up from the ground that you land on. I would probably try my best to uh, fall on like one part of the body and try to make sure that you don't hit your head. So those are the, the areas that I'd be most concerned about. Next movie we're gonna watch is Titanic. It's getting quiet. It's just gonna take a, a couple of minutes to get- Manny took one for the team. The boat's organized. <sighs> All right. I don't know. Pause. I know where this is going. Basically, <laughs> someone is gonna freeze. Honestly, two people should freeze. What you're dealing with in hypothermia is essentially like blood flow that is no longer going to areas where it needs to go to keep the tissue alive. When the body goes into this mode, it's trying to conserve as much heat and as much blood flow as possible. So it'll divert it towards vital organs like the brain and the heart. But the extremities, they get frostbite and eventually you have complete disruption of the tissues and they may not be viable after that. I don't know about you, but I intend to write a strongly worded letter to the white star flying about all this. I'm glad he's still talking. I'd be worried about the quiet people. He has uncontrolled shivering. The other things that I think is a little bit unrealistic is he's able to continue to think things through. Like that mentation is something that goes when you're starting to be more hypothermic. So the fact that he's talking is a good thing. I just don't know if he'd be able to move as freely as he's moving now, if it's that cold. This is what I was talking about, this face right here. I'd expect that face a lot earlier on if it's that cold. The mental status is starting to wax and wane because the only thing that's being perfused really is parts of the brain and now that's going. 
I would also worry about is the, the heart rhythm regular. When you start to drop the core body temperature to this level, you, your heart is freaking out. At 28 degrees Fahrenheit, I just think that you're gonna start to freeze a lot sooner, five minutes max, definitely not an hour in this water. Let him go. She just let him go. Cold hearted. Like literally. And this is the last thing <laughs> that I would do is roll into some water. I just don't see her having full action in those extremities. If she was able to withstand this tundra level cold, uh, maybe she could blow the whistle. <laughs> but no, nah, I just don't. Definitely not loud enough to get the guy to come back. Up next, we have John Wick Chapter 3. What are we going to do about John Wick? He knows what's coming. Oh, he has to die. Pause. <laughs> if you watch the movie, you know that he's got like these special liners inside of his jacket. It's possible that he may be able to sustain a couple shots like that from a handgun. Even his reaction is real, like to double over after those shots. We watched a couple other movies, they didn't even get phased by being shot. Whereas he, in this movie, like doubles over. I think that this is realistic. Sorry, Jonathan. We should Don't see any other way. All right, pause. So, can we rewind it a little bit? So, one, two, three, four, stop. Man, all of those different hits means that he had blunt trauma in each of those locations. My initial reaction was like, oh, he's breaking his fall. By no, <laughs> the fall is breaking him. <laughs> his ribs wrapped on the bar at one point, another part of his hip struck the dumpster, and then finally head and shoulders. So, you're talking about vessels still shearing because they're stopped abruptly. You're talking about bones that have to deal with that force and they're not made to bend and be malleable. You might fracture the skull, but you could also cause the brain to jostle. It's so many different injuries in this scene that I don't even think I could just start to enumerate them off the bat. He's John Wick. I mean, at the end of the day, you know he's getting back up with a broken pelvis and spine all out of whack. Up next, the campaign. Okay, so people own exotic animals and I've seen everything from snake bites to Gila monster attacks. Common location, actually common mechanism. You know, someone handling the snake, trying to act cool, and then all of a sudden snake, go snake on them and that's what happened. Oh, the fucking serpent bit me! Staple my to my balls and then do sit-ups, <laughs> it hurts! Sir. That's kind of realistic. Somebody, <laughs> once you get bit, it's, it's every curse word in the book. <laughs> I would be worried about the person who uh, talks, talks, and then all of a sudden starts to just trail off because that means that the effect of the, of the venom is starting to take hold. I can't feel it. Yeah, here comes the neuropathic hey, you stuff. Okay? Yep. <laughs> hey, come on, we gotta go. I love how they, they change to fisheye lens to, to basically simulate that he is altered and that's realistic. Other things that would happen, I mean, he may fall out, have a seizure. If you have recently gotten bitten and you start to have this altered mental status, you may run straight through a window like that. I don't think that that's uh, completely unrealistic. The next movie, Casino Royale. He just got poisoned. And because he's James Bond, the car is tricked out with a, a defibrillator, like an AED right there in the dash. Pause. I, I don't know what that is. It looks like he's trying to, to capture his pulse or a rhythm. I mean, if I'm looking for somebody's heart activity, I'm going to place leads around the heart. I don't think that this is realistic unless he's trying to put an IV access into his body. 007. Stay calm and don't interrupt because you'll be dead within two minutes unless you do exactly what I tell you. 
He's starting to sweat. We call it diaphoresis. Now, this is what I was talking about as far as you have to place somewhere on the body those leads in order to effectively distribute a shock. A trick you attack a cardia. Digitalis. So, pause. Go back a little bit. A trick you attack a cardia. This means that his ventricles, the part of the, the heart that's responsible for forcing the blood around the body, they're beating more rapidly than normal. This is an indication to deliver a shock or to cardiovert somebody. So that's what I think is about to happen. As soon as it reads charge, okay, that'll work. Bond. Don't push the red button. Yeah, do you hear me? Don't push it yet. Okay, pause. <laughs> I don't know how realistic it is for somebody to distribute a shock to themselves. I mean, maybe that's just a badass thing that only James Bond can do. People who are in this type of tachyarrhythmia are unable to like hold things. I don't think that it's realistic that someone be able to just push a button and, and deliver a shock to themselves. Okay, pause. This is not real. Uh, obviously, it's some movie magic. They put some numbers on top of some stuff. I would expect the arrhythmia to be a lot higher, 150s, 160s, 180s. Most of us get to 135 just from a brisk walk or jogging. 97, I'm assuming down at the bottom is his oxygen, usually through a pulse ox on a fingertip, uh, which we didn't see him place. <laughs> Push the red button now, Bond. It's always the bad <laughs> passed out. So I think that that's realistic. Uh, a lot of times patients will have these types of reactions in the setting. <laughs> so that's realistic. You are literally rebooting the heart from scratch, like a cold boot. And so when I talk to patients afterwards, they feel like they died for a second. I mean, technically they were right because it was entirely jump-started. That is a normal reaction for someone to kind of like jolt and then all of a sudden come back to. Next, a childhood favorite, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Okay, kid, give it to me. I can't say that I have seen a lot of bricks to the head. Any object with considerable mass that strikes you can lead to a concussion like this. Imagine putting like a boiled egg inside of a jar with a little bit of water. That's essentially what the brain is like inside the head. And then it striking against walls of the skull is similar to that egg, that soft uh, part of the egg striking the glass. And it can lead to nausea, vomiting, confusion, dizziness. He's gonna have that within the next day. Look, see, see, <laughs> this is called diplopia, right? So he sees two different objects. And when I have those patients come in after head injuries, I'll say, do you see one of me or two of me? You wanna throw bricks? Go ahead, throw another one. <laughs> you get two bricks to the head. You basically are gonna stay there for 24 hours if I have anything to do with it. Not because you have an injury, but because you shouldn't be doing anything to get hit by two bricks. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. And we're gonna keep you around. All right, dude, just stay down. Just stay down. All right, good night. Like, Kevin is incredibly accurate in terms of his throwing abilities. <laughs> and so it looks like the dude is getting struck in the same place. I'd be worried that he has like a small fracture in the front part of his head, like his frontal bone, or even one of the sinuses being fractured. My man can't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. He did take a tumble, but did he actually black out? If he blacked out, this is a guy that I want to get on a CAT scan table as soon as possible. One, it can actually be the person blacks out because of the impact. A repeat fall could be because less blood flow to that portion of the brain because it's leaking into another space. These are all in the scenario of like struck by a brick. I don't know, I've never been hit by a brick, so <laughs> I'm gonna keep that streak going. Harry. That was the breakdown with GQ. Thank y'all for watching. All right, peace.